I put Crayola to the ultimate test against professional and intermediate paints. You'll be shocked at the results. I was. This painting was done entirely with Crayola. Now, the brush stinks. There's no doubt about that, so we'll just throw that away. The biggest thing that I loved was the vibrancy. I was actually totally amazed by the vibrancy of Crayola paints. The biggest thing that I didn't love was that the paint stays kind of goopy even when it's thin, and so it was a little bit harder to get these skinny lines. The next paint that I used was this US watercolor paint set. It also got vibrant colors better than I expected. Uh, not very transparent, but I was able to do much finer lines with it, and the shading worked okay too. The next one is M. Graham, my professional watercolor paints. Plus I do use a, a few core paints in there. For this painting in particular, I used my Teacher's Choice palette. So this uh, painting, of course, was easier for me, me to use. I'm used to these paints, but they also thin really well. Every color on here, even the dark ones, was not really, really thick. Just only right in that very center did I use thick paint. And this color is so has so much pigment per square inch that it's just quite amazing. And so it goes, it, it goes a lot easier. And when you're doing these thin lines, it's very thin paint, and so it's easier for it to flow. We're going to just paint this little flower. I'm starting down here with Crayola. As you can see, I've wet these paints ahead of time so that they're ready to go. And that's a big part of keeping the colors vibrant. This Crayola set has no pink. And maybe some do, but I didn't see any. So we're going to do red. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of purple and hope that pinks it up a little bit. It, it did, but it's kind of going to be a mauvish pink. Start with this inside part right here. And one of the things I want to see is how it softens. So dip my brush and I'm just running it along the line. It softens really well. That's one good thing about Crayola paint. And I'm going to try and get into a lighter color. Just use a little bit of red up here and see how that goes. Now that looks a little bit pinker. And then the outside edges has some blues. Okay, not my drying off my brush and soaking up some of that blue. Well, that went pretty well. That soaked up pretty well. And then there's some blue on this side as well. Another thing about the Crayola is that it takes longer to dry. So in the birdhouse, I was putting on really thick paint because I wanted intense color. And the Crayola one, I painted all of the other two before it was dry enough for me to put any detail into it. Now this is just plain red, so it makes a sort of pink. And I'll add a little bit of the purple right. Now I did use good quality brushes and good quality paper. I think I mentioned that. And that does make a big difference. The purple is not as intense of a color as the pinks and blues in this. You don't have any really intense pink to do this part. I'm just going to add quite a bit of red. These colors have some nice transparency and they blend pretty well. So Crayola paints have a lot more going for them than I ever expected. So that's a pretty little flower with Crayola. It's almost finished. I've also sprayed these paints, but they don't have a divot like the Crayola, so it's hard to keep it on there until you've used up some of the paint. Now this has a very bright pink, so I think that'll probably make for the, the make the flower look a little bit more like the flower in the photo. Ooh, bright, bright. Okay, I'm gonna soften that, and that's that's softening okay too. And then we'll add a little bit of the purple. to the base. Gets a different kind of a hue on it. 
it's not very transparent. Let's see if I can make it a little bit darker by just adding some more purple. That's better. Getting lighter as I get to the tip, dip my brush, soften the edge. Well, it does do some lifting when you have to go back over it, but I think all paint does that actually, depending on the color. Now, when I tried that, it totally lifted. So that's a good thing to take note of. Like the Crayola, if you get it, if you want something really dark, it, the paint's a little bit thicker. And now we're going to have a purple pink in here. And that's the closest we can really get to the magenta. If I add too much pink, though, Instead of turning magenta, it just all gets lighter. And I'm going to put that shadow in there now. Adding purple to get the darkness. That's a good green, but it's still quite loud, so I'm going to just put a touch of red with it, or you could put brown. Well, I maybe put too much red with it, and it turned brown. Okay, there we have the American paint. And it wasn't easier to work with than the Crayola. Uh, but it did make a better color. It was a pretty equivalent, actually. Now we're going to go on to my professional watercolor paint. So this magenta score, the rest of this is M. Graham that we're going to use today. And I have a quinacridone rose. So we have a pink, and it's a little bit rosier pink than this, but if you mix it with magenta, you get a good color there. And I have this way watered down, like waterier than skim milk. But look at how intense the color is. That's the advantage of one of the advantages of professional watercolor paint is that it's easier to move around and get detail with thin paint that's not goopy. And see how watery that is? I mean, it's, it's very watery, but look how intense the color is. And it runs out pretty good. It makes a, it easy to spread. It's actually darker than I want, so I'm going to lift a little bit with a clean, wet brush. I guess I'm just going to start by doing the whole thing pink. Let's see how lifting goes, because this should be lighter there. That goes pretty well, too. So all of them do well at lifting. And now we're going to get some of that magenta and do this part right here, where it's so intense. And then this little flap of flower is mostly white. I'm gonna give it a tinge of blue. With some pink down in the corner. Colors on this. This real magenta. 
So I'm sure you're already seeing <clears throat> some advantages and disadvantages. Let's put that shadow in there. We'll do the outside edge of it first so that that doesn't all dry into a hard line. And then blend it in with this magenta so that the magenta spreads out a little bit. And a little bit of that shadow up here as well. I'm getting toned down this green too, even though it's not as loud as the greens are in those littler sets. There's a link for all of these products in the description if you would like to try them out for yourself and get started, and including the brushes and the paper, so that you know what they are. Do you think that a professional painter could paint with Crayola paint? I mean, that came out pretty good. Or with the U.S. color paints. Please write in the comments and let me know what you think. The biggest point that I would like to make with this is that you don't have to wait until you can afford professional paints. You can start with any kind of paint. So there's a thing among artists, and we call it hours on the brush. People will say, how long did you take to paint that? And Leon Zen always says, well, it took me two seconds and 40 years. The hours on the brush makes a big difference in what you can paint. And so if you want to start out painting and you don't have the money for the expensive paint, then just start and get some hours on the brush and save your pennies so that you can buy the better quality products. If you really do want to be a professional watercolor painter, you need to move towards something that's light fast. Neither the Crayola or the U.S. watercolor have any kind of guarantee that they're going to not just fade away after a few months. Whereas the M. Graham has a light fastness that you can see on each tube. And even the one that's the worst light fastness is probably going to last 50 years if it's not in the sun. And the other is much longer than that. Happy painting, everyone.